Hey, how are you? Hey, how you doing? Good, thank you for joining us. Um, no problem. I know that Keandre Jones was a big leader, um, you know, not only for the linebackers, but for the whole uh, defense last year. You know, who's kind of, you know, helped step up as that guy and take over that leadership role so far in practice? Uh, definitely, man. That's, that's actually a great question. A uh, big prop to Keandre. He was definitely an older guy that uh, gave me a lot of guidance and a lot of younger guys' guidance. But um, um, I would say uh, since the end of my freshman year, um, just sitting down with Lawson at the end of my freshman year, and um, him telling me that he wanted me to be the vocal leader and uh, step into the leadership role. So I would say that um, not only myself, um, but a lot of, young, a lot of younger, younger guys and um, has uh, kind of started to be leaders of the team. And um, you can see a big difference and, um, and just a change in a lot of different people's mentality. Emily, please unmute. Hi, Cortez. Um, I was just doing? curious. Good. Um, this spring and summer have been very chaotic in a lot of ways. Um, but I, I was curious if coming into your second year and Coach Loxley's second year, is there a sense of you kind of know how things are, are going to go and what things are going to be like in the program? And, and has that helped you in any way? Oh, man, much definitely. I think me being in the program for one year, I kind of got a chance to see how, you know, Coach Lox really runs his program. Um, which is, you know, a very great program. You're going to work hard every day. You're going to learn every day. But I would say, uh, you know, my freshman year coming in, not knowing much, not knowing many people coming from Florida. And um, now this being my second year, I've just grown so much to know, you know, how how he operates his program and how, how he focuses on this program. So I would say, you know, for me, just it, it's been a big thing. My second year has been tremendously. I've grown tremendously, um, you know, getting to know a lot of people. And um, I would definitely say, like, uh, <laughs> it's been a lot of growth since my freshman year to now, my sophomore year. We'll go to Alex Flum. Alex. How's it going? Um, I know last year one of your best games was against Michigan. And, and this year, with how the season is, you're jumping right into Big Ten play. I have to play all these Big Ten teams, you know, throughout your whole schedule. How do, do you think uh, it kind of helps you prepare for that tough schedule? And kind of how do you approach the fact that this season is just going to be week after week, tough Big Ten opponent? How do you prepare for that? Um, definitely, man. That's a great question, man. Like you say, um, of course, you know, my, my best game was against uh, Michigan. But I would say for me and as, as a team, I say our mentality has been not really worrying about, you know, our opponent. I think Coach Locke preached us as, as being the best version of ourselves. So I would say, you know, much respect to all the teams in the Big Ten. It's a, a great conference, one of the best conferences in the country. So I would say our biggest thing is trying to be the best us. How can we be the best Maryland? How can I get better being myself? How can I help my teammates become better? So I would say, man, honestly, our approach has been honestly going day by day. How can we try to be the best Maryland we can be? And I truly feel like, you know, Coach Locks has preached to us that if we can be the best us, then, you know, we, we can definitely shake some things up in the Big Ten. So um, I, I, that's the best thing I can say as far as that. We'll go to Jacob Steinberg. Jacob. Hey, Cortez, appreciate you doing this. So can you just talk about the excitement of being back in pads <laughs> finally after waiting for several months, what that's been like so far? Oh, uh, man, honestly, man, it's it's been tremendous. I know for me, like I said, my last game was against Michigan, so I haven't put on pass since my shoulder surgery since since then. So, man, the excitement with the first day back, man, it was like um, a little kid, you know, you know, the day before Christmas, you know, a little kid waiting for a present, but I'm going to get that. That's, that's how I kind of felt like for me and then for my teammates as well, man. It's been a long process of not knowing what's going to happen, you know, postponing, canceling. So I would say yesterday you really know, like, man, this is for real. Like, pads are here. We've got to play a season, you know, we're practicing with pads on, so the excitement level was, was just through the roof. Next up, we'll go to Alex Dacey. Alex, please unmute. Hi, Cortez. Thanks for doing this. Um, so <clears throat> I know you were just mentioning that you guys put the pads on for the first time. I said, could you sort of uh, talk a little bit about how that felt and also sort of the differences, because I know you guys had to, practice without pads for a little bit longer than usual. So could you just sort of talk about mm -hmm. how you guys were adjusting to that and, you know, kind of how you're going to uh, go forward, you know, with this, with a shortened time uh, with the pads. Mm. So, so if I'm hearing you correctly, you want me to answer uh, first, how was the practice without the pads? Yeah, sort of because, because I know you guys practice for longer than you usually do without right, pads. Right, so right, how right, was right. that? And then how is, you know, uh, how are you guys uh, preparing going forward with this shortened time with um, pads? So honestly, the the period without the pads, man, was was a great time mentally for us to really understand our playbooks, 
understanding what, what the philosophy was and, and what are we trying to get accomplished. So I would say the biggest thing without pass was, you know, getting mental reps. You know, of course, you know, playing in the Big Ten against, you know, Big Ten opponents, you see a lot of great players, you know, a lot of great coaches. So it allowed us mentally to really be prepared, you know, for what, what's coming up. Our play with what our scheme is going to be drops, what, what gaps, you know, what gaps are we going to hit, uh, stuff like that. And then now, of course, I think with this padded practice, Coach Locks has made it clear, you know, we, we want to try to remain as healthy as we can. But the biggest thing has been, you know, getting callous. Everybody getting strong with tackling. I know, I, I know, if y'all y'all been watching the SEC, ACC, but you know, tackling, um, running through tackles. So I think right now with pads, and we're trying to get the toughness back. You know, the techniques of tackling, or you know, making the correct blocks and correct fits and stuff like that. For our next one, we'll go to Sharla McBride. Sharla. <laughs> Hey there. Um, you're talking about, I know you guys are ready to go. You've been practicing, but you're still doing all this in the middle of a pandemic. Um, and there's been a lot of changes that you guys have had to kind of deal with and just kind of roll with the flow. What's been the biggest hurdle for you coming back to football while still trying to social distance and, and keep yourself and your teammates healthy? I would tell you uh, one thing, uh, discipline has been the biggest thing. You know, we're 18, uh, 22 year old kids. You know, of course we're in college and it's, it's very difficult to you know, to, to be smart, not just when you're at God, or at our team house or on the field, but like Coach Locke said, um, life outside of football, you can't go to parties, you can't, you know, you can't hang out with too many groups. So I think the biggest message for that, that I've preached to my to our team and uh, to other guys, just my teammates, is just how bad do you know, how, how bad do you want to be successful? So I think the biggest thing is just everybody just trying to be disciplined. But it's, it has been difficult, though, you know, this pandemic hasn't been easy. Um, of course, there's a lot of stuff going on in the country. So I think the biggest message that we've done is that, you know, us as a family, everybody, no matter, you know, who you are, um, has to be disciplined as far as, you know, being smart. Because if one person, you know, contracts the virus, that could bring it to the whole team. So our message has been, you know, just be disciplined. And um, if you if you want to have a season, you know, that, that, that's what we want to do for the remainder of the time. Thanks. No problem. We'll go to Ahmed Gafir next. Hey, Cortez. Uh, you got you you talk, kind of talked about, you know, kind of just going through that first year with the program and how it really helped. Um, now that you're kind of going into that bigger role in year two within the linebacker, what's kind of the biggest lesson you've learned through that first year? And to have guys like Chance, Ace, Shaq in the room too, um, how has that kind of helped the transition? Oh, it's been great, man. Like I said, I'm, um, I'm technically, you know, I guess you can say I'm a, I, I'm kind of a young guy, but I've just grown tremendously. Um, I think the biggest thing is just me allowing, continuing to grow. You know, guys that's older than me, or, you know, that's that that that's been through more stuff and just continuing to learn from them, maybe, you know, what what they have done. But um I say the biggest thing I've learned, like the lesson I've learned is just be myself. I'm not trying to be um anybody else or I'm trying to be the best Cortez I can be. So but also continuing to learn. Um I wanna be the best leader I can be. You know, Coach Locks put me in a leadership role for a reason. So I wanna be the best me and uh help other guys grow and I want them to help me grow as well. We'll go back to Lila here, Lila. Cortez, I know that, um, you know, Ruben was a really big piece of the recruiting class. You know, what's it been like to watch him in, in practice and what has he brought to the linebacker room? Oh, man, that kid is special, man. Um, just to be around him, man. This, I remember when he was on the Swiss division, I got a chance to host him, man. You know he was different, man. Uh, a mentality that wanted to get better every day. Uh, he's a young guy that's going to work very hard. So to, to have him with me every day, to be able to work out with him every day, you truly see the hunger, how hard he wants to work and how hard he wants to be great. So I would say adding a young guy like that, and not also him, but the younger guys that's in his class, to have them with us is was a tremendous uh, addition. And just kind of as a follow-up to that, I know that he was kind of a guy that was a leader in getting a lot of guys to, you know, come to Maryland and has, you know, a very, like, vocal personality. How has he kind of just kind of um, helped fit in with the room and just uh, kind of establishing and inserting himself? Oh, he's done a great job of that. Um, like, like, like myself, he is from Florida as well. So, um, you know, I, th I think Florida boys just might have something in the water or something. But nah, I'm just, I'm just joking. But now nah, he's definitely done a great job of just, you know, um, you know, not, but not just our group, but just people in his class of, you know, rather as receivers, our old linemen, of, you know, just, just being, just being a leader of his class, you know, taking charge of his class, rather it's, you know, everybody communicating, everybody talking. He's, he's been doing a great job of that. All right, we'll go back to Emily. Emily? Um, hi, sorry, this is kind of a two-part question. Um, since we didn't talk to you last year, 
first, just what made you want to come be part of this program before we had really seen what Loxley was going to do here as a kid from Florida? Um, and then when, and then thinking about, you've mentioned all the growth, um, if you could think of any specifics of how you've grown, whether that's on the field or off the field. Um, so the reason I chose to come to Maryland was, um, I know coming from Florida, I was thinking like, man, that's a long way from home. And, um, Honestly, I, I didn't know anything about Maryland uh, until Coach Locks came and, um, his, you know, his, of course, his staff came with him. But the biggest thing about me coming here was, you know, Coach Locks just preached to me about, you know, building my own legacy, um, having an opportunity to play in one of the best conferences, you know, and in, 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 like I say, in the country, um, being able to be a leader, not just on the field, but off the field. And, um, but just be around guys that, that, that can help change the program um, like Maryland and, and, and bring it to the top. So I said that was a big reason why I chose to come here. And also because of the opportunities out the field. You look at area we in, man, D.C., um, just all those areas, it's, it's a lot business-wise. Um, you know, life after football, being able to get connected with different people, different resources was a big reason I sat down with my mother and uh, we talked about that. And um, what was the uh, second part of your question? Sorry, uh, I was just going to ask your growth from freshman to sophomore okay. year. What specifically? Oh, definitely, definitely. Uh, I mean, coming in as a freshman, man, I said my freshman year, you know, not, not really – not really like knowing, I know you know people, but not really knowing a lot of people. Um, you know, of course, coming from Florida, from here, it was a huge transition. You know, where I'm from in Florida, it's, it's different. It's a different lifestyle, you know, different you know, different way of living. So coming up here was a little different for me. I think I was in a shell more. I, I was definitely in a shell more. I was a little more quieter. I always worked very hard, but I was a little more quieter. And I would say, um, honestly, when Coach Locke gave me the leadership role, it allowed me to really let my personality show rather than uh, talking to my guys, sitting down with not just guys that I know in my position group, but rather this a long snapper or a kicker, it allowed me to be able to get to know all my teammates as not just four players, but as a person. So it allowed me to build you know, better relationships. So I grew in that aspect. And I would just say, just keep growing like uh, as a man off the field. Um, growing up, you know, being away from home for a whole year, you get three chances to go home one year, um, you know, come, you know, kind of where I'm from, looking flights and stuff. So. Uh, me being away from my family and stuff like that allowed me to mature and grow more as well. 